Hi, it's Chester Tuckwell at Blue PK and Computer Training. And in this video, we're in Microsoft Excel. And the task we have in front of us is to combine all these statements, which are on separate sheets, into one master statement. But we also want to do it in a way that if we were to add more statements on separate sheets, so a July statement and an August statement, that our master statement will automatically update with those new records. The other thing we've got to think about is within each statement, we've got some headings that we need to get rid of, also blank rows, uh, blank columns that we also need to get rid of within each statement. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to convert uh, each of these ranges of data into Excel table. Excel table. So I'm in the April sheet here. It's very easy to do. I've just selected all of the data and then I go to insert table and um, it just confirms here the range of cells that you are converting to a table and also you have this option my table as headers and in my instance here because I haven't got headings right at the top of my kind of data set here I'm going to leave this unticked. My table doesn't have headers and I'll just put the column headings in for you. Now, what you'll want to do is give the table a name. So you'll notice there's a new table design tab that you get when you're in a table. It's contextual. And you've got a little box over here, table name. And I'm just going to give it a simple name, April. And you press enter to confirm. So we're going to do the same thing for each of the sheets. Once it's selected, you can go insert table. Or there is a shortcut key, control T. Do the same thing. And this one will be called May. Press Enter to confirm. And we'll also do the same for June. It's already selected. Insert table. And we'll call that one June. Okay, so those are all the data sets prepared for our next step. So the next step employs the use of Power Query. And in this version of Excel, I go to the Data tab and I look for Get Transform and Data. Now I'm in Office 365. It should be very similar with Excel 2016 or 13. If you have a much earlier version of Excel, such as 2010, you may need to install Power Query uh, into your version of Excel. If you do a quick search at Google, uh, you should find uh, the relevant resource for that. But anyway, uh, what you do once you're on the data tab is you go to get data from other sources, blank query. And that'll open up the Power Query window. And then what you do in this little formula bar, you type equal equals Excel dot. And you'll see on that list, no, it's not come up again. There we are, Excel dot current workbook. That's what you want and then just an open bracket, close bracket at the end, press enter, and you should get this little table. So in this little table, you can see the tables that we currently have in our workbook, and there are the names that we gave those tables. Now we don't need this name column, so we can remove that column. And then what you do is you click on this little expand button at the top of the content column, and then click on OK. And that will give you a combined view of all of the data in each of those sheets. Now, although it's done the combining there, you can see that we've got to do a lot of work in terms of getting rid of these heading rows that appear at the top of each statement. So let's start with the transformations we need to apply to our data. The first obvious thing to do is to get rid of some blank columns. And what I can do is just right click on that column heading, remove. You'll notice it adds a step here, in the applied step. So what we can do is get rid of steps if you decide that's not needed. I also need to delete this column. Now these rows also need to get rid of here, these first three rows. So I'm going to go to remove rows, remove top rows, and it will ask me how many rows I want to get rid of. So it's always the top three rows and then what I can do is I can promote the top row as or the first row as headers so I'll put all that information in the headings there now the next step is to think about the data types for each column at the moment 
you can see it hasn't really chosen the data type. So this one here, I can click on that little icon there and I can just say, well, this contains date data. This one's fine, it's just text. This one I'm going to choose as decimal. And these other two I'm going to choose as decimal. Okay. Now, I want to get rid of the rows that contain an error. You can see that some of this data hasn't been converted to dates because it contained a text value or something like that. And actually these errors are quite useful because those are rows that I don't actually want. Now I'm going to click into this column. I'm going to go to remove rows and I'm going to say remove errors. You can see that gets rid of all the errors in that column. And then I'm going to say uh, remove rows, remove blank rows. And there we are, I've got rid of all the blanks. So now if I scroll down, you can see that I actually have a very nice set of data with all of the statements combined. So the final step is just to go up to close and load, close and load. Now what that'll do is it'll bring all the data into Excel onto a separate sheet, sheet one. And I'll just call these, call this all statements. Okay, so we've managed to combine all the statements that are currently in the workbook. But what if we add new statements? We would also want those to appear in our all statements worksheet. Now we're going to have to change the query that we created, edit it uh, in a small way for this to work. And to do that, you'd need to view the queries and connections uh, task plane down the right here. Now, if that is not appearing, go to the data tab and just use this button here, queries and connection. And you can see that kind of turns it on and off. So double click on the query you created. And then you need to go back to the source step, the first step where we used our little formula here, excel.currentworkbook. And that will show all of, obviously, all of the workbooks that you combined, but it uh, will probably also show the query that we created or uh, the table as a result of the query we created. Now it's called query one because we didn't give it a name earlier on. You could have called it something else like called statements. If it's not appearing in that list, just click up here, refresh preview, and it'll appear. Now, what we need to do is filter out that particular table, because obviously if we don't, it's going to end up combining all the data twice, the, ta the data that's in the individual tables, and then in the combined view of all the data. So we're just going to filter that out, click on OK, and that's all there is to it. And then I'm going to close and load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import two new sheets, uh, July 2018 statement, August 2018 sheet statement, and then we'll see if we refresh the query whether that data automatically appears in our all statements worksheet. Okay, so now you can see I've added the two extra statements, July and August. And the first thing I'm going to have to do is convert these statements to tables like we did for the initial three, insert table. So I'll call that July. And I'll do the same for August. Insert table, August. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back to all statements. And what I'm going to do is just click on this little refresh button. And 124 rows loaded. Previously, I only had 70. And if I scroll down, there we are. There's the July data. And there is the August data as well. Now, this would work in the same way, by the way, if I was to add some data to an existing sheet. So I'll just call this test transaction. 800. So if I refresh this, so 
So I'm looking for test transaction and there it appears as part of the April data. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Using Power Query to combine data from multiple sheets in a way that updates, even if you add new worksheets to your data. Thank you very much for listening and watching. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.